Thank you, Bob. Nobody gave me a big hand. <laughs> well, thank you, Bob, and thank you for the midnight dinner. Because <laughs> this time I was still in China last night. Okay. Are you okay at the back? Can you hear me without the speaker? There's no speaker, so they have to hear you. Okay. <laughs> All right. That's not too bad. Just to start off with a little experience. Two years ago, I was keynote speaker at the Ontario Professional Engineers Association in a tennis, not tennis, in a golf club. You know, engineers supposed to be very technical. You know what? There's no microphone, no speakers. In a big hall of uh, several hundred people, much more people than here. And when they searched, they did discover a microphone and a speaker, but it's fixed for the kitchen. <laughs> so how am I going to speak in the kitchen to several hundred people? So I thought of a way I got everybody to come to the front. I say, put your business card on your chair so you reserve your seat at the back, but for the meantime, come to the front. So that's a fun part of it. But anyways, I uh, just got back from Hong Kong. Last night, I was sitting one night overnight. Prior to that, I spent three days, three and a half days in uh, Jakarta and Surabaya in Indonesia. Over 15 building projects, totaling $1.2 billion USD. Okay, so that's a fun part. And I, uh, a couple of years ago, I helped them remotely design probably the most outstanding hospital in Southeast Asia. For 60, 60 that is, million dollars US. So very state of the art. They hired the head of the hospital from Singapore or something. Okay, but so that's in Surabaya, not in Jakarta. Jakarta, uh, one of the projects I handled was worth $400 million. The second one, $200 million US. So mega projects in Asia. And prior to that, I was in Guangzhou. For some of you may not realize, I've been a chief feng shui advisor to the largest developer in all of China, the poly group of companies. OK. They have the northern and southern. The northern part is the government-designated entity to manufacture weapons for the government. Southern poly group. Man they don't manufacture, they build houses, buildings, and commercial stuff throughout China. So hum humongous. And uh, because of that, I also become advisor to the five-star general's office of the Liberation Army of Southern China. So I advise them how to lay out the offices. <laughs> so that's a fun job when you are protected by so many soldiers. <laughs> Under the gun, that is. <laughs> OK. But uh, Indonesia was a fun thing. It's, I'm honored to be able to bring such an ancient art throughout the whole world. I've already been to 66 countries. In fact, I would be in Miami, uh, West Palm Beach, Boca Raton, Fort Lauderdale, uh, three days from now, this weekend, on 20 projects, Saturday and Sunday. And 31st, I will be in Detroit, looking after three nursing homes and 10 pharmacies. And then March, I would be in Yunnan, China. April, I would be in Sydney, Australia. May, I would be in Sanxi, China. And June, I probably would be keynote speaker at the Wuhan University in China, Okay, talking about philosophies of the world. And two years ago, in case you were not here last year, I was keynote speaker at University of Beijing to a bunch of students, a bunch of professors. And the professors acclaimed me as one of the most outstanding philosophers of contemporary world. I talk about philosophies and politics of about 20 countries in the world. Where the, how the philosophies guided the politics, how the politics guided the economy, and what happened in Europe. <laughs> so that's under control. In fact, I said, uh, for the financial crisis, it should create enormous opportunities for people. And just a side story, a very good friend of mine, Scottish guy in Naples, Florida, I did his live reading in 2003, guided him through. 
It, during the financial meltdown 2008 and 2010, three years, he personally made, based on my advice, $210 million US. So opportunity is abundant when the economy is good, more so when it's bad. It's how you look at life, how you, so this is what, why I'm here today, to help all my friends here, to look at the world, just one step ahead of everybody. When you succeed, you don't need to succeed by 10,000 miles. When you go to the racetrack for the horse races, the winner of the horse, only they call one nose, one horse nose. That's how much a horse need to win. So in today's world, it's just slightly ahead of everybody. Paul, where are you going to be on Saturday, February the 2nd? February 2nd, February, I had to stay put. Yeah, well, in Except for every second. It's your party, your party. <laughs> 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 it's HBA, Chinese your ball. You're going to be oh, there. Oh, I had to be there. I had to. Yeah, yeah, that's the night. <laughs> I had to look at my, uh, my, look at my uh, calendar to know it. so many. Because average every year, a long time is New Year time, I had to give 20, 24 speeches all over. In fact, uh, another uh, quick uh, it, back long since uh, Bob gave me all the time I want to kill <laughs> was last year uh, your friend HKCBA in Ottawa invited me up to give a speech in Ottawa mm -hmm. and when they blow through my predictions they pulled me aside because I said so many bad things about Hong Kong last year I said Hong Kong would get into political turmoil the head of Hong Kong would be changed and he would be in big trouble throughout last year he said, can you not say those words? I said, OK. But I, so I just ease off on the po <laughs> politics of Hong Kong. But in hindsight, everything I predicted was true. <laughs> Can't say it. Now, uh, just one last uh, uh, recap of what happened. I don't know if you're a follower of Toronto Star, because this would be the 18th year they are going to publish my predictions for the world. And for uh, my good friend Bob, this is actually the 12 times I've been speaking here, 12 years. And so you're about to listen to an old man talking. <laughs> just as an old man, I justify that I'm 67 years old this year. So three years later, it would be on my 70th, big day. Big deal. Big year, yeah. And Somebody is trying to convince me to throw in a 1,000 people party. <laughs> Should I do that? Thinking about it. On my 60th birthday, I had a party for 560 people. Yeah. For my son's wedding, I put in a party for him for 630 people. <laughs> yeah. If I invited all my friends, my number of friends in Toronto alone exceeds 10,000 people. So impossible for me to fly all my friends, only the preferred groups. Yeah. So now 2011, 2012, just time flies by. Time flies by. But one thing I'm proud of was January 29th last year, Toronto Star evaluated every one of my predictions for 2011, among which all 10 major ones all came true. In September 2010, I wrote an article saying that there would be a major earthquake in eastern Japan in spring 2011. It came true. I predicted that Papa would get the majority. It came true. I predicted McQuinty would barely make it, but still minority, and it came true. And I said also McQuinty would not be happy. I guess he's not happy now. He's retiring. Okay, all those can be calculated, okay? And so what have we got for 2013? Now, one thing is very important is to understand the base of all these calculations. These are based on uh, several major philosophy, mathematical formulas. So nothing is called psychic, nothing is called horoscope or astrology. To me, Astrology stuff is nothing but BS. Because life is governed by numbers. Everything that happens, every time of the day, every day of the year, 
nothing is incidental. Everything comes for a reason. You just have to be able to calculate what the reason is. Okay. And this morning, one email gave me a very sad story, which said, and I said, 1994, I did a live reading of a good friend, Mr. Lee. And I make a note on his live chart. I said, between 20, 12, and 13, be very careful. It's a checkpoint for you. He died last week in sleep, heart attack. And I predicted that almost 20 years earlier. And I told our common friend that he probably forgot what I told him. Could have been avoided. Yeah. Life and death can be calculated. Everything has life cycles. People have life cycles. Economy has life cycles. Every country has a life cycle. So what cycle are we in now? We're in a very interesting time. 2012, the money center was in USA. So I predicted USA economy would come back alive, mainly based on automobiles. 2013, they're going to be in big trouble. Okay? Because it's a receding center, a lot of wars will be stirred up by the United States. Worldwide, that is. They had to do that to cover up the econ economies, problems, and also generate more money by selling weapons. And that's the way it works. And whether they like it or not, it's going to happen. Okay, so we have to be thankful with that. And 2013 is the year, a very unusual year. One of the formulas that I use to calculate the world is called the flying star method. The second one is called a light chart for the world. And the third is based on Yi Ching. To find out, you know what Yi Ching is? Yi Ching is zero and one, which is the base of all computers. So you can say the country that creates the first computers is actually China, back over 5,000 years ago, using Yi Ching. And with the Yi Ching, you can calculate the rule of the universe, okay? You can even calculate when uh, catastrophe would happen in the universe, when the sun would have all these waves, or the black dots, we call it. Okay, so this year is very unusual because the controlling number for this year is the number five. Five is a very extreme number. Five means power on the good side, authority, but it also means catastrophe and also mishaps. And that star is a governing force <clears throat> for the world for this year. And this year is further governed by a Yi Ching symbol. The symbol is very simple, to me anyways. Okay, the first one means mountains. Second one meaning thunder. It means thunder is below the mountains. What does it mean? It means indecision. You got the two caps, uh, solid lines, top and bottom. Middle lines are all empty. Meaning that a lot of countries are still in the process of, to rebuild the economy, the finances. Okay, but at the same time, because the middle part is hollow, this would be a record year for earthquakes worldwide. There would be extreme drought and extreme flood, depending on where you are in the world. In other words, we are experiencing extremities. But more so, this world would be full of contagious illnesses, which you are already seeing some now. But usually the new year kicks in a month before it kicks in. That's why there's a record year of flus, okay? And also uh, things to do with food, a lot of food issues. And in the past, we always say food issues would be from Asian countries. This year may not be, it can be any country, okay? So be very careful about what you eat this year and also about the contagious illnesses. Okay, that's on the negative side. On the positive side, how would this world work out? Let's divide this world into sections. Now, traditionally, <clears throat> we call China the central section. Middle East, the central south section. We call the Western countries, like United States, as a pure West section, or called metal. 
and the northeast part we call it Europe, okay, also metal. And we call Japan the east side, which is wood. Taiwan, Hong Kong, Southeast Asia, we call Southeast, which is also wood. So we divide into different elements for different countries. All right? Now, the most powerful, obviously, is the controlling center, which is five. So, which is also central. So that means China holds the key to the world recovery of economy. Whether we accept it or not, it's going to be more so. Now, last year, I don't know if, if you, some of you were here for my speech last year. I said one of the major predictions last year <clears throat> was that housing, real estate, remember, will actually go up by 20% before it go flat in later on in the year, and it did happen. Much so against the CMHC and against a lot of analysts. And in fact, by April, I heard Mark or Richmond, uh, had, some of them had already exceeded 20% growth, exactly as I predicted. And China, I said, would purposely suppress the superficial economy to allow time to breathe and reorganize. And it did happen. And I also said there would be many changes of uh, political heads in the world last year, and it did happen. Now for this year, China had a new government, new policies. Three things they are going to do significantly. Number one, they are going to redirect the economy. So all these uh, controls will be lessened. And also, they, they will be anti-corruption enormously. A lot of big officers may be out in the ditch for this year. In fact, we're seeing some of them, all right? So if you think you are the friend of the uh, <laughs> premier of some province, and make sure that he's not the one that got caught, that you get into trouble too. <laughs> okay, that's the problem about China politics. It's always the influence. Depends on who you know or who you, who you got uh, really hung up with. So that's number one, anti-corruption. Number two, they would boost up the entire transportation network more so than before. Right now, they have the largest network of train transportation in the world. You know that, eh? Four lines horizontally, four lines vertically. They are going to extend on those and build more so. Imagine you can take a train from Beijing to Guangzhou in eight hours. Never thought about it. It would cost you over three hours by flying. Now you can take a train for eight hours and save the time two hours before, two hours after at the airport. So it work out to be about the same time. Okay, things like that will happen more, transportation. Number three, urbanization. So they are going to move these villages to become cities as such. You know what's going to be the driving force? Housings. So when I met with my friends in Guangzhou just a few days ago, they already emailed me, they're buying up real estate <laughs> along the Pearl River. They, so because the, along the Pearl River, within the next three years, most houses will be doubled. In Toronto, it takes 10 years. In China, it takes one to three years to double. <laughs> okay, and still cheap. We you think about it. Okay, so that's what's going to drive the force. Now, a lot of the economic recovery would not depend on outside forces. A lot of people thought if Europe and USA are doing poorly, how can China make money? Domestic needs. They do it inside. But another interesting thing, in uh, November, I was in 15 cities over 17 days in China. I was all, all over the country. The final stop was in Chaozhou, southeastern China. And one of the huge toy factories was feng shui, designed in feng shui by me. And we had dinner together. We actually had drink together. The new car, karaoke is, is quite different now. Okay, It's like a get-together, gentleman's club, a get-together. I asked him, okay, about his toy business, where do you export to? He said, Europe. I said, are you not suffering? Because they really went down. He said, he doubled his income. I said, how did it happen? He said, Europe was poor to the public eyes. 
but the rich people in Europe are getting richer because his customers are not the common folks, are the rich people. He will sell a race car, the toy car, not the real car you see on the street, just remote control, 1,000 US dollars each. No, 1,000 euros each, more than 1,000 US dollars. And they're buying them up like popcorns. These people have so much money that they don't see the limit. In Europe, that is. Then why would this country go broke? Easy. Why would they share the money with the government, with the country? In our sense of patriotism, it's gone. Everybody is what is for me, not what is for the country. That's why they're in trouble. Okay? So that's why my friends to make so much money in their financial downturn. In other words, don't let the media fool you. What you see is not what it is. What you see is very, very circumstantial, very superficial. What's deep inside is more than that. The United States is the same. Okay, I was in so many times in USA. When you see these wealthy people, the wealth you cannot measure. They can burn money and will take days to burn the money. They have so much money. So what is poor is they don't want to share. Okay, which may not be a bad thing when you look at the, the system. Okay, it's how, how it works. Now, for 2013, USC is a bigger trouble because now they're governed by, by the number seven. Seven is one note before eight. So the life cycle that goes from 2004 to 2023 is called life cycle eight. So that makes seven a very negative number. Seven also means warring, wars. So USA is going to create a lot of wars. They don't do it themselves. They are going to go back to the 1960s, 1970s policy. That is to some participation, but mainly to stir up other countries. And one country they already stirred up is Japan. The second one they're going to stir up quickly is uh, Philippines and also Vietnam. But they are leery about Vietnam because they play both sides. The third one they're working on is Indonesia. In fact, when I met my friends in Indonesia, uh, last, just a few days ago, he asked me what I have to say about Indonesia. I said two things. Number one, you guys are going to have a record number of hurricanes. He said it just finished with one last week. Okay. Second, I said there will be political changes. It's, it's a maze. He said, indeed, they're going through a federal election uh, in a, a few months. I didn't know that. I just calculated it. So it's all going to happen, all right? So, but USA being a big boat is not going to sink easily. The life cycle will continue to go down for the next 32 years. By 2014, uh, 24, 2024, China's financial base and economic volume would exceed United States. Well, that's a turning point of the next cycle. If you say the last 10 years, China went through a golden age of 10 years, the next 10 years will be platinum. And the 10 years, the 20 years after that will be diamond. That's how much is going to go up. This is life cycles, nothing political. That's the way nature works. Okay? Now, the other place would be in big trouble would be Japan. Japan suffers from the triple conflict and argument center for the world. There would be a lot of political turmoils. I really doubt if the current prime minister can survive 2013. Most prime ministers don't work more than one year. Easy job. <laughs> okay, easy come, easy gone. Okay, if they stay longer than one year, they may die of heart attacks, I guess. <laughs> because no matter what they do, they cannot please anyone. Okay. Now, the one major problem that's going to happen to Japan this year is caused by the United States. There will be a record number of rapes on Japanese women by American soldiers in this year, worse than India, but more covered up. Okay? So if you are a lady, you go to Japan, stay away from the U.S. camps. <laughs> or don't go to a night bar without an escort. Hopefully, somebody with power. Okay, so number one. Number two, they would have a lot of uh, problems with perimeters of Japan. 
the North part, they are going to be in a real argument with Russia about an island. On the west side, argument with Korea. On the south side, argument with China. So they are going to be confronted by three sides. So the economy will go further down this year. Okay? Now, where's the money center for the world this year? Korea is the money center. Samsung is going to overtake Apple. Apple's stocks is going to go down by up to 40% this year. Okay? And RIM will not recover, but will survive. Okay? And then Google will go up. The supplies black horse, Microsoft. Okay, you're going to see a new series of telephones driven by Windows 8. And that's going to be the next big wave coming. So don't forget about that. And the planes, surprisingly, come from South Korea. Do you know that Apple, the iPhones, were actually designed in South Korea? Mostly, and only assembled in China. That's why when they break up, these same group of engineers created new Samsung. That's why Apple wants to shoot them. The same people actually manufacture their stuff. Now they manufacture Samsung, the galaxies. Okay, even I, I even sold my iPhone 5 on the first week and changed it to a Galaxy Note 2. So it gave you a little bit of advertising because of the power I discovered. Only because the, my iPhone 5 lost all my calendar entries. When I was in the middle of going to appointments, lucky I clocked all the addresses of my GPS in my car. Otherwise, I would not know where to go. They just wipe out of nowhere. I didn't even touch any button. <laughs> OK, and I, when I got hold of the Apple, they said it's third party software. They don't support it because I use Google Calendar. So that one answer, I made up my mind to change. Because that's my lifeline, I cannot lose my calendar. <laughs> OK, simple like that. All right, so that's how it's going to work about the financial centers. Unfortunately, Samsung, I don't believe you can buy Samsung on any public stock markets yet, right? Only within Korea. South and North Korea will not get into wars. In fact, they are going to have a little bit more handshakes. North Korea is going to open the door to more visitors. Amazingly, eh? But I would not like to visit them yet because they don't allow any cell phones to go in. <laughs> you don't know that? No cell phones allowed, OK? No cameras allowed to in some areas. They, they would take your cameras away if you shoot something that you should not shoot. So it's still not quite there yet, OK? But they would open the door slowly, inch by inch, <laughs> like that. OK, Russia is sitting on the fence, very smart. They are going to double their military might this year, it's quietly, quietly. It's something Canada and Russia have never done before, but they would start doing that this year. They're going to argue about some rights in the Arctic Ocean. That's going to be very interesting. Anybody want to go underwater? <laughs> I tried to book, book a boat cruise to uh, the Arctic. You know how much it costs? $24,000. <laughs> Canada say forget it. <laughs> Cheaper to go to South Pole. Okay. <laughs> okay, so things like that is gonna happen. What about Europe? Europe is a bit interesting because they would try some countries are trying to kind of threaten to get out of Euro, but I don't think they will. So in in fact the opposite is true. The Euros will climb up in value against the US dollars. OK, but economically, they are still on a shoestring, so it's still dangerous. Now, United States, is, as I said, is worrying, but they have their uh, interesting part. Washington, north of Washington, like New York, Boston, actually would do very well. In fact, during the financial meltdown, I, when my friends asked me if they buy if real estate or should they sell the real estate, I said, depends on where you are in USA. If it's New York, is hardly affected. If you are in uh, San Francisco, close by the Bay Bridge, you're hardly affected. But if you are 
inside Oakland or inside like Tracy or Stockton, you'll be dead in the water. <laughs> so just a few miles apart, the complete economy is different. That was the last three years, and which was exactly as I said. Okay? Now, what about where we are now, Toronto? Toronto actually would do very well this year. Last year, in my predictions, I said the mayor would be in big trouble throughout 2012. And it did happen, unfortunately. And, but for this year, okay, Toronto would do very well because it's a learning center and also it's very fortunate. Real estate, once again, will resume. How, what, in what month would it resume? Between March and April. Toronto real estate will come back up again. So if some of my, uh, my friends say they are going to wait for the meltdown to buy real estate. I say you better die now and get, get birth again. <laughs> okay. Because we're in Toronto, long-term real estate will continue to go up. This is called extrapolation. In extrapolation, short-term ups and downs, long-term is one line up. Okay. And I witnessed that since 1973 when I bought my first house for 20 grand, <laughs> good old days. Okay, the same house probably would be a million by now. <laughs> okay, so Toronto is a good city. What about Vancouver? Vancouver real estate will still suffer, not the same as Toronto, will still go down a wee bit because within the next 25 years, Vancouver would have a major, major earthquake coming. I first predicted that 20 some odd years ago saying within 50 years there would be but now, 20 some years gone by, so within the next 25 years, major earthquake in Vancouver. <laughs> in fact, I, some of my friends are very pious. He already moved to the hardest, highest part of Vancouver <laughs> and stay away from Richmond, which will be underwater when it happens. Now, <clears throat> Alberta is going to do marvelous this year, and Northern Saskatchewan will also do marvelous. Okay, and I don't know if anybody ever gone to Saskatchewan, Saskatoon. I've done quite a bit of feng shui in Saskatoon, amazingly. And in fact, I've done a lot of feng shui in uh, Anchorage, Alaska. Yeah, at one time I saw a huge polar bear from a distance. That was kind of quite a view. <laughs> but by the time I took out my camera, it's gone. It's too bad. But cities like that, but Saskatoon, or Saskatchewan and Alberta would do well. That means they would do quite well in natural gas and oil. So don't expect the oil to really go down, forget it. <laughs> that also means Canadian dollars will stay quite high up because Canadian dollars based on natural resources. All right? Now, there would be a lot of uh, arguments, instabilities in South America but more so in India and Pakistan. There would be quite a bit of political turmoil in the Pakistan region throughout this entire year. Okay? And so be careful if you go to those areas. Quite on the opposite, Africa would do better above average, actually. Yeah. In fact, my Filipino friend took my advice and already opened a factory in Central Africa, already making a lot of money by just manufacturing cans. That's all it does. Cans for all kinds of drinks. So that's happening too. Okay, South Africa, very stable. So surprisingly, for change, they're okay. What about Middle East? There will always be battles, but not wars. The battles will continue for the next 1,000 years, okay? The only time when Middle East don't have a, metal, a, a battle is when it's wiped out and rebuilt, so it never happens. So it always will be like this. Doesn't matter. Okay, that's nature. That's because of feng shui. The way the whole region feng shui, based on feng shui principles, will be like that. So that's how, basically how the whole world works. So the money center is northeast. So if China is considered central, northeast would be Korea, Japan would be the east, would be the triple conflict. Hong Kong and Taiwan, not too bad. Hong Kong slowly gets out of all this. We'll have to talk about Hong Kong, right? This is HKCBA 
get out of this argument with Mr. Liang. In fact, have you ever seen Mr. CJ, they call him, uh, CY, CY, on TV these days? No. I think he, that's the quickest way to mature. I think he's just getting 20 years overnight. <laughs> okay. In fact, the other guy, Mr. Tang, is a lucky guy he didn't win. Sometimes being a loser is a winner. Okay. Same as what happened to me in 1993. If I would have won the election to become member of parliament, <laughs> I would not be here today. I probably <laughs> would be broke. <laughs> uh, surprising why I would run for member of parliament that year. Uh, I was in uh, Miss Kim Campbell's team too. So sometimes losing is winning. Because I lost, I won. I become a public person, I make friends, and, and in fact, look at life very differently since. So in life, remember that way. So we cover a lot about finances. Now, what about uh, Toronto, back to Toronto for a moment? The money center in Toronto this year is Markham, and you name you. So let us say, if you focus on Markham, you'll do marvelous. The second one is Richmond Hill. Markham is a pro Toronto GTA's money center for 2013. Okay, Richmond Hill is a speculative money center for this year, including Aurora. So Aurora is going to have a huge surge this year, followed by Willowdale. Those are the golden triangle. Remember in GTA, you talk about golden triangle. Okay, so think about it. The fourth one is Avon, Woodbridge. Okay, so these areas, you cannot go wrong. Scarborough will suffer. Downsville will suffer quickly. There, and also New Toronto, that's southern part of Tobacco, will also suffer. So it's not evenly distributed. It's very irregular. But yet, southeastern tip of uh, Scarborough, including the beaches, will do well. Amazing. So when you look at Scarborough, can, you have to say, with Scarborough? So there are three parts there. So that's how you should invest. Now, what about the Canadian dollar this year? It was always remain to be slightly higher than US dollars this year. So don't expect it to really go down. And what about interest rates? If you want to borrow money or you want to be borrowed, <laughs> okay, then the interest rate would stay low. In fact, it will stay low for the next four to six years. So it's very safe to, that, to, uh, to look at it that way. If you involve uh, some of your investment portfolios, keep that in mind. Now, bankings, okay, bankings would also do well this year. Canadian banks never can go wrong. There are only six banks, Schedule A banks, the rest of Schedule B banks, you don't care about them. In the United States, Banks are very volatile, there will be some mergers, some smaller banks still going down, unfortunately, because they are too loose on the system. One thing that saved Canada in the last few years is a strict banking system, and also Canadians being conservative. Okay, that helps in bad times. Okay, so banking, to invest in banking overall is safe. Which banks would do particularly well this year? Okay, for change. Royal Bank would do well. Last year, it was Bank of Montreal and Bank of Nova Scotia. This year, I would say Bank of Nova Scotia and Royal Bank. So keep, keep those banks in mind, okay? So, but uh, just on the side story, since I helped Bank of Montreal redesign the branches, all the brand new bank, uh, bank branches are developed based on the model I gave them. So every one of them had a huge, Waterfall at the front, <laughs> with the bubbles going upwards. <laughs> you go to uh, Dantes and Spadina, I designed that one for them, and also one in Scarborough, Huntingwood and Blimney, also designed by me. But I designed that one for them for one reason, because they got robbed twice a year in the past, every year. Since I functioned them, a few years gone by, never robbed once. <laughs> I did something functionally-wise to stop the robbing. Okay, so it worked. Okay, now uh, CIBC would be ups and downs, but overall they're okay. So banks, you're okay. Now, what about textile? Not too okay. 
So if you have to want to stay away from textile business, unless you want to be dead in water, high tech is what everybody is interested in. There will be huge number of mergers. So it's good and bad. Okay, good is if you smell some mergers coming, it's a chance to make a lot of money. Okay, and bad is sometimes bad to see good companies like Apple going to stocks going down, rim hanging on the swings, things like that make you feel bad. Okay, but that's the way it should be. So the high tech part, anything to do with uh, fires, maybe in trouble, energy would be a lot of controversies this year, lots of arguments. And what about the uh, travel agency. Anybody in travel? Obviously, Miss Cafe Pacific is here. <laughs> Traveling. Okay, back and forth from Asia would do marvelous. Would do marvelous. Uh, but to Dubai or Europe may suffer a wee bit. Okay, I think Dubai and Canada are still on a very funny relationship since Harper stopped them from coming to Calgary. I don't know why you should stop them. What, has, what is there in Calgary? Who cares? <laughs> but anyways, now I will not go to Dubai cost a fortune. All right, things like that. Uh, so travel agencies to do with Asian countries would do well. Now, so China's economy overall is the, still the dragon head, we call it 8%. I predicted growth a little less than last year. Last year, I predicted about 9%. India would go way down this year. India can only grow up by around 3% because there's some political turmoil there and also health issues. That's humongous. And also the, um, what about food industry? Anybody in food industry? Food is classified as earth. Food would do very well, don't worry. Depending on where the beef comes from. <laughs> Is if the beef is from a southwestern region, which is an illness center, then it could be trouble. Alberta beef may be in trouble this year too. So be careful about where the source of the food is. Okay? So that's the basic thing how the uh, economy goes. Any business sectors you are interested in that I can tell you about? What about insurance? Insurance depending on which side of insurance. Okay, the general insurance will go way up, lesser claims, and the life insurance uh, suffer a wee bit this year. So there are two different sizes of insurance sectors. Okay, now what about the general world weather? South part, okay, hot, 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 lots of fires. You're gonna see fires everywhere in the southern regions, like Texas, okay? And what about the southeast, like Florida and like Toronto? A record year of windstorms, especially Hong Kong and Southeast Asia. Lots of wind, lots of hurricanes. Hong Kong hasn't suffered from too many typhoons for years. They're going to have their share this year. But lucky that financially they do well. That's good. And Hong Kong may actually get a surge in real estate, which help the other sectors. So Hong Kong, you don't need to worry. All right? Now, there would be a lot of flooding in the north and northwestern regions. Like, for example, Europe would experience a record year of flooding, especially in northern Europe. Okay. And yes, southern Europe, a record year of drought, like Italy or Greece. I don't know how Greece can live anymore. I thought they only have uh, stones and rocks. <laughs> but anyways, they always survive. But that's what's going to happen. Now, southwestern regions is uh, real estate would do well there too, but the center of illness. So be careful about the food or the exports of food. Be very careful. Now, west is a warring places like USA, as I mentioned earlier. So ups and downs, big swings. Northwest is a travel region. So anybody in travel sector. Keep in mind, northwestern parts of a country may do very well, such as uh, northwestern China, Xinjiang. Okay, they really boost up. By the way, I was a guest for the government last year to Xinjiang. 
treat them as very well. Five days, five star hotels, all you want to eat, all you want to play, all covered by the Xinjiang government, Western China. So that's, that's something worth uh, paying attention to. And northeastern China would also do very well for the powerful part of it, and northern China too. Anybody ever been to Mongolia? Yeah. One thing I wonder about Canada. I've been in Canada for 44 years, coming on 45 years. Yet I've never been to Northwest uh, Territories, Yukon, or uh, somewhere up north. Yellow line. <laughs> Yellow line. Yellow line. I, my thing is, my point is, it would be if they push up the travel up there this year, they would do very well because there's a travel center. Somebody should think about it. <laughs> okay, so those are on the, on the good side. Any other business sectors I am not covered? Um, I just have a specific question. Uh, what about luxury homes in Toronto? <laughs> luxury homes in Toronto will continue to be luxurious. <laughs> We're talking two million and above. Yeah, like Remember, was it three years ago a house was sold for $18 million? But they didn't put in the newspaper. I was the one who feng shui the house. In fact, I helped to design the house, built by uh, my buddy uh, Paul Miklas. Yeah, $18 million. They had trouble selling until I feng shui it. That changed the energy. It was sold within a week. <laughs> OK, so that's how it works. What about legal services? Legal services is regarded as metal. Metal would do well this year. Do you believe that in terms of feng shui, legal, politics, metals are classified the same elements? So you can say politicians are just a piece of metal. <laughs> They're all metal. OK. Sorry, uh, automobiles. They would do well. But this, this also is a record year for recalls for Japanese cars mainly. And you, yeah, and some U.S. cars. What's going to be big, used cars or brand new cars? Brand new cars. Brand new cars. They're getting so cheap. <laughs> OK, now the next important topic is your science because of the time limitation. OK, I can drag on for the next three year, hours, which would not be favorable for you. OK, uh, now so the horoscope signs are the last thing I want to talk about because I, I cannot even make myself a believer of it. <laughs> because life is based on not just the year you're born in, it's also based on your month, your day, your hour, and your place of birth. Okay, to come up with over 90% accuracy of your entire life. Okay, and I've done this for so many people. Average every year, over a thousand people come and see me throughout the world to chart their lives, to give them directions, to prevent problems, if possible, all over. But it's very scientific. But still, we need to talk about it because this carries a lot of truth in it, too, even though it's not the complete truth for the individual. But for general, yes, it works. Now, what is the year coming? Snake. What kind of snake? Water. What kind of water? <laughs> OK. Uh, first of all, <laughs> first of all, we have 12 different signs. And out of each sign, we have 10 different elements. So the highest common factor is 60. That's why every 60 years, the world repeats itself. That is why when Singtown newspaper interviewed me, a few weeks ago, about December 21st, 2012, whether the world is going to end or not. <laughs> I said the world will not end for the, at least for the next 3,000 years, 3,700 years. OK, so it's still quite a long way for you and I to see. But anyway, <laughs> but anyways uh, it's just the end of one cycle, that's all. So it's just repeating. Either that or the author died for a heart attack or something <laughs> before he finished the book. But anyways, so don't worry about that. Our world will continue to exist way beyond the time of our grandchildren. So don't worry about it. So better look positively. So, but every element also is divided in yin or yang. 
Yin is soft and yang is hard. And this is a yin water or soft water snake year. So that also governed by the Yi Qing mountains and thunder. You see two solid lines with four uh, empty lines, okay? Meaning that a lot of changes are very subtle this year. So snake has a lot of interesting traits. Okay, snakes, there are two signs out of the 12 signs that are famous for keeping money, snake and rats, because they take the little holes and hide the money, <laughs> okay? Snakes are flexible. They better be flexible. They, they don't have legs, but they're slimy. <laughs> they're beautiful, sexy. That's why snake people usually are the best looking of the 12 signs. Any snake people here? Yes, snake, is she look good looking? You better say yes. <laughs> okay. But for the snake also represents money. So sign of snake. So people born yet a snake coincides with a snake. Usually we say it's bad. Some people thought it's good. But this year is not entirely bad because the conflict is like this. Say he's a snake person, that chair belongs to him. So if you're also a snake person, you don't have a chair to sit on. So you get exhausted. So people born in the year of the snake this year will tend to be tired easily, prone to diseases, so they should rest well, exercise more. But then the snake on the opposite hand has a tremendous lucky sign this year. That also means it's a breakthrough year for the snake people. So if you're born in the snake, you always have a dream, okay, like to fire your boss or something. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe this is a year to do that. <laughs> Opportunities will knock at your door. So the snake people are born in 1953, 65, 77, 89, okay, and 2001. Anybody born in 2001? <laughs> <laughs> Mentally, we should. <laughs> the next sign is a horse, born in 1942, 54, 66, 78, 90. 2002, any horses people? Horse people are full of energy and full of romances this year. There's a, so if you're in the businesses, business dealing with people, you're in the entertainment business, you're a marketer, you're in sales, congratulations. If, what if you sit behind a desk, forget it. <laughs> so you should get out there and meet people. So, or if you are boss of a company, you want to hire some good salespeople for yourself, consider the horses for this year. Be, take advantage of their uh, people factor. If you're in show business, singer, movie stars, and your horse, congratulations. Save some tickets for us. <laughs> they do well. Sheep people, born in 1943, 55, 67, 79, 2000, and, eh? you? Your son, be careful, there's a sickness sign. Prone to accidents and illnesses, be careful. Okay, but the, the, uh, is this uh, working or studying? Working. working. If he's studying, it would do marvelous. <laughs> so maybe he can take more courses, get another license. Okay, but be careful about accidents and illnesses. Other than that, they would do even better with the help of a horse person, even the horse will remember, if you're a sheep person, get a horse to help you for this year. That would do magic. <laughs> okay, monkeys, born in 1944, 56, 68, 80, 92. Any monkeys? My younger son. <laughs> monkeys are double-edged short for this year. Because monkeys and snakes connect to form silver connection, yet monkeys and snakes also conflict to have legal conflicts. So on the negative side, first to prevent it, if you are a monkey person, please drive carefully because you're prone to get tickets, okay? Or if you buy or sell stuff, please check, double check your contracts before you get sucked in, okay? But otherwise, if you're a monkey person, you will make some new friends. There will be some back, some jealousies and backstabbing, but you will make some friends. If you haven't gotten married yet, not a bad year to get married. 
okay? And if you haven't had babies yet, think about it for the monkeys. Very agile for this year. But the number one sign, this year's the next sign, the roosters. Born in 1945, 57, 69, 81, 93. Any roosters? What business are you in? Um, pest housing. Housing. Consulting. Consulting. Uh, like? As well as security alarms. You do very well. Security alarm is classified as metal. OK, the city is getting big. It would do well. I think every household should have alarm system. Yeah. I can monitor my home even when I was in Beijing, you know that. Yeah. I can control every light in my home with, with my Samsung <laughs> Galaxy. They should pay me a commission for that. <laughs> OK, it's called smart home. Smart home technology, so it should do well. But anyways, roosters and snakes form a golden connection. Golden connection meaning the, com the power of the year is going to benefit them, it's going to come on to help them. So if you're a rooster person, people relation number one, golden connection, okay? Because you do so well, you're so loved, you get jealousies, which is normal. In fact, the more jealousies we get, the, more, the happier you should be. That means you're successful. If you're nothing, nobody will be jealous of you, okay? If people badmouth you even better, that means they're jealous enough to badmouth you. That's good, that's great. Okay, so always welcome people to badmouth me too. <laughs> Something like that. All right, because only because they are losers. Winners never badmouth anyone. They don't need to. They are too busy on their work. No time to badmouth anyone. People with all the time they want to kill, they, are, they don't know what to do, so they badmouth people, be jealous of people. So they are losers. So don't worry about them. Okay. So, but roosters would do well, and if they are in marketing, sales, people relation business, they do marvelous. So think about it. The key word, go for it, people, people. The next sign, which was the worst sign last year, but very really good this year, is a dog. 1946, 58, 70, 82, 94, any dogs? Okay, they say dogs are the most loyal sign. You think so? <laughs> 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 they, they do well this year because they have a power sign. If you're a lawyer, if you're police, you're a soldier, you're in a position of management, and you're a dog, congratulations. Go for it. Okay, so don't, life is very interesting. When you're in a year of conflict, then usually the following year would be good. Extreme yin, extreme yang. And the principle is very clear. Anybody ever play basketball? Am I right that the harder you hit the bloody ball, the higher it jumps? Life is the same. The harder you fall, when you get up, the higher you can get up. So falling down is a good thing if you look at it positively because you learn from it and you do better afterwards. <laughs> okay. So the next one is the interesting one, the pig. People like to call it boars, being polite, but I think pig is okay because I'm one of them. <laughs> okay, that's an old Chinese saying, you put on the shirt of a boar, a pig, and eat up the tiger. You heard about that word? <laughs> People thought just a little pig, but when they open the mouth, they swallow the tiger. That's the old Chinese saying. <laughs> okay, so pigs are born in 1947, 1971. 83, 95, any pigs? Wow, I got a lot of comrades. We should form an alumni. <laughs> <laughs> Out of the 12 signs, pigs are the most friendly sign of all. They're more neutral, but not neutral that they don't have charisma, they have charisma, okay? And pigs are also very handsome people, you see them. <laughs> any pig girls? No pig girls? <laughs> I would say pig guys and snake girls are the best. Uh, <laughs> either opposite, but they, <laughs> they fight, but they're the best matches. Uh, when did you say, what years were the pigs? 1935, 47. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he always picked for my leg. 
He, he forced me to include 1935. <laughs> I'm 1947, by the way. Lunar age. <laughs> no, he's too young. Bob is one of the gentlemen I respect the most in my life. With the dedication, sincerity, integrity, loyalty, amazing. Be, <laughs> be spiritual. <laughs> Pigs actually have very spiritual sons too. Pigs are very unusual character, but pigs and snakes are opposite. So if you're born in the year of the pig, stay away from gambling. Ga uh, ra ram something? Lama, right? Lama, Lama, okay, Lama. Can't say the word. Lama feng shui is classified as white tiger. Casino Niagara classified as green dragon. So for a human to go there, you're going to be swollen. <laughs> swallowed, and swollen and swallowed. <laughs> okay. Anyways, so, so no gambling because of the opposition, meaning money could be lost easily. Be very careful about stock markets. If you want to buy stocks, buy the blue chips. Stay away from the, the uh, dangerous ones, <laughs> like penny stocks or something. All right, so take my advice for it. Travel, travel, travel. The more the pig people travel, the better they would do. So if you are on a desk job, yeah, John, John H. K. C. B. A. go to Hong Kong every month. You do better. <laughs> okay, because the travel sign, the, the number one travel sign this year is the pig people. I already, you know, this typical pig standing here, tell you what I'm going to do this year. Okay, I just went to China and Indonesia. It's only January. And this weekend I'm in Miami. The end of the month, I'm in Detroit only three times in one month. February, I love to buy can because Chinese New Year can move. But once uh, March comes, I will go to southern China. April, I'm going to Sydney, Australia. May, I'm going to central China. June, I'm going to central China again for different reasons. Things like that. So the first six months are already planned like that. And August, thinking about boat cruise. <laughs> because I always take my beloved wife to boat cruises in our anniversary. This would be our 36th anniversary. Yeah. <laughs> so, and on our 25th anniversary, I built a house for her, cost me $1 million. Yeah. And then everything is hers. And last year, or a year and a half ago, she sold it and made a profit of $600,000 tax free. <laughs> because it's a principal home. Okay, so things like that, you cannot go wrong with it. Okay, be good to your spouse. If you cannot build a house for your spouse, at least build a toy house for her or him. <laughs> Something that's, that's good looking at least. Okay, so remember travel. The next sign is interesting, the rats. 1936, okay, I go back earlier now, right? 48, 60, 72, 84, 96, any rats? Wow, are you guys accountants or salespeople? <laughs> Financial. That's uh, just like the snake are very good with money. And there's an old saying, snakes and rats share the den. What does it mean? Meaning they're very similar. They either make excellent friends or they make the most fierce enemies. No, nothing in the middle. So snake and rat people have an interesting relation. So for this year, financially, rats would do very well. So if you're in sales, okay, or if you are in the financial sector, marvelous. Go for it. Rats and snake, remember. Anything to do with money, that is. And if you're a red person, go for it. Okay, no stopping. Now, next sign is less exciting, the ox. Ox born in 1937, 49, 61, 73, 85, 97. The year when Hong Kong became China, part of China. Okay, any ox people? No? I can skip that one, eh? That's the number one stopping sign of the 12 signs. They say, if you want an, uh, a cow to drink water, the cow had to be willing to do so. Otherwise, there's no way you can pull down the head of the cow, which is so true. 
I call it the pain in the neck. <laughs> so Ox people suffers from a bit of a sickness sign this year and a little bit of people conflict, but it needs some help. The help comes from the root of person because the snake and the ox can connect, cannot connect without rooster. With the rooster forms a golden connection. So if you're an ox person, you want to get into business, you need the help of a rooster person that you do well. Without it, then be conservative. Don't venture your capitals before you lose it. So keep that in mind and rest and exercise well because you're prone to illnesses, especially to do with food or to do with breathing, the respiratory system. Okay, tigers. Born in 1938, 50, 62, 74, 86, 98. Any tigers? No? Well, you guys are too humble. No tigers. No, two signs are missing. Keep that in mind in the books. No ox, no tigers. Okay, tigers, if you are a cop, you're a lawyer, a judge, an army officer, and a tiger, congratulations. Okay. But if you are a tiger in a business dealing with people, be very careful. You run the people issues. Okay. So as a tiger person, either you're above and do well, or if not, you better shut up and keep quiet and listen and just follow orders. So that's how the tiger works for this year. Okay. So uh, be careful about legal conflicts if you're not already a lawyer. Okay. Drive and handle contracts very carefully. Now, rabbits, born in 1939, 51, 63, 75, 87, 99. So we have only one rabbit. Two. Wow. The number one sexy sign is a snake. Rabbit is number two. <laughs> Can we make a judge a day sexy? <laughs> Meaning they're attractive. Rabbits are in the power this year. So if you're a rabbit person, you're an authority, good. If not, ask your boss, master incest, so you should be promoted. <laughs> okay, if you're in a position of with judgment, okay, dealing with uh, decision making like a counselor type of thing, okay, you do very well. If you're a social worker, you do very well. Okay, but be careful about these still some people issues with it. Sometimes it's double edged so You're good in dealing with people with power, but you're also bad because sometimes you over speak or something. Now, dragons, okay, 1940, 52, 64, uh, 76, 88, and 2000. Year of the dragon. Year of the dragon. Congratulations. It's one of the most powerful signs this year. We say dragons and snakes are the same sign sometimes. One is in the sky, one is on earth, that's all. So dragons are into expansion, into promotion. So if you are dealing with uh, decision making in the corporation, okay, you're dealing with uh, moving around to deal with clients, and if you're a dragon, you got it. You do very well. Okay, so anything major you want to do, things that are holding you back last year, because last year, 2012, was a conflict year, this year is a breakthrough year. Go for it. Okay. Just be careful about romances. Maybe too many. <laughs> okay, so that concludes the 12 signs, believe that or not. Any questions? Any signs I have not mentioned? Now we remember no ox, no tigers in this room. Or they are hiding. 